guys welcome back to my channel in today's video which is highly highly requested I will go over how to find manufacturers and suppliers for your online business using a website called Alibaba.com and Alibaba.com is a huge platform it is essentially Amazon for wholesale so if you're looking for someone who can make your products in bulk large amounts of product with your own logo on it Alibaba is definitely the place for you so we're gonna get into it in this video go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you end up liking the information that I share with you today and consider subscribing if you like learning about online business with that we're gonna jump right in now here is the home page and as you can see it actually looks pretty similar to amazon.com which is why I compared the two earlier on they do have a uh, big event coming up which is the March Expo so they've got that right here at the top and then Alibaba is segmented into different portions on this home screen what you can see first is that they've got the search bar right at the top so that is where you can type in whatever the product is that you're looking to sell but they do also have categories so if you're looking for products that you could potentially sell and you're using Alibaba for some inspiration then you can search by a category and they've got all types of things like construction consumer electronics home appliances and then it goes even deeper into these different subcategories here to be completely honest when I'm on Alibaba I very rarely use this category tab because I'm normally looking for a specific product so I don't even bother but I just wanted to let you know that it is there some of the other things that you're gonna see is a spot here where you can sign in you can create your Alibaba account for completely free it's very simple and straightforward they're just gonna ask you for some basic info and then you'll be good to go no you do not have to have an LLC to use Alibaba or to order from this website you can completely just make a random account and no one is gonna care whether you're incorporated or not for anyone who's worried about that Here's where you're going to be able to send messages. You're then going to be able to just learn more. Um, right here is a little tab, and I can go over this a little bit later on, but trade assurance is a way that Alibaba helps to protect your money. So if you're ordering a product or inventory from a supplier on Alibaba, you're able to have the order made with trade assurance, which is basically like insurance in case something goes wrong with your order. So I highly recommend that every supplier that you are working with, that the order is either made with trade assurance for that extra protection or PayPal because you've got PayPal protection. So either way, you're trying to mitigate your risk by paying in a way that you'll be able to get your money back should something go wrong. And this is just you being overly precautious. OK, so that's what this is right here. And then you'll be able to see more here, like your cart, essentially, if you are signed in. I'm not signed in right now. Um, and then the help tab, you can segment the language and the currency that you want to shop with and then where you're shipping it to if you would like. So there's a lot of different settings that you can alter and play with when you're on here. And then what you can also see is the different markets. So the categories up here are a little bit more specific and I would say that the markets are more similar to the categories that you would see on Amazon.com. So when you're shopping on Amazon, they've got things like electronics, baby, beauty, home and kitchen, health and household. So that is more similar to the markets that you see here in this left hand side. And then again, you can always segment further and get more specific with what you're talking about. And then other information here, they've got new arrivals, products that you can drop ship, and then just other recommended items as well. So what we care about mostly is this search bar right up top because you can look up anything you want. And it looks like right now they are putting screen protector and we'll use this as an example. However, I will say that screen protectors are very saturated. If you're here for Amazon FBA, at least I would not recommend screen protectors, but we're going to use it as an example. So I'm going to go ahead and just use screen protector. I could type it in, but it's already pretty much populating. So I'm going to go ahead and click on screen protector here. And oh, I forgot to just say, let me go back so I can mention this to you as well is that you can search by products or you can search by manufacturers. I like searching by products because it just gives me a good lay of the land of all of the different manufacturers who can make the product, but feel free to search by manufacturer if you feel. So I just wanted to clarify that because I know that you can see it up there, but let me go back to screen protector so we can use that as our example. So what you're gonna see when you type in screen protector is a whole list of different 
manufacturers who have listed screen protectors as products that they can make for you. So what we can see is that we have got screen protectors that have different variations. So they have screen protectors that come with three in there. So a three pack, they've got one packs, they've got, I'm sure five packs. You could ask your manufacturer to put as many as you wanted. So if you were doing like a big bundle, you could put 10 of them in one package if you wanted to. But you have to think logically about the people who are ordering your product. So if you are selling screen protectors, are there really going to be a lot of people who are looking to buy 10 screen protectors at one time? Or is it more likely that they're going to want two or three because by the time that they're using 10 screen protectors, they probably have already purchased a new phone. Or maybe they're dropping their phone because they do extreme sports and maybe they would need 10, but the average person is not going to need 10. So it would be silly for you to make a screen protector offer that has 10 inside. So think about who you're selling to and what would be realistic as far as how many to include if it's something like this. So we can see the different suppliers and what we can see is actually a lot of information just by taking a quick glance right here. So for this very first one that we can see, they're listing it as screen protector for iPhone 14, 13 Pro Max. And the reason that they are even making the title like this is because they're trying to put as many keywords in their title as possible. So whether you're looking for an iPhone 14, 13 Pro Max, whatever, they're basically saying that they can make it all. And that's why they have the title looking like that. You can see what probably everyone here is interested in, which is the price point. They're saying that they have 17 cents all the way up to 84 cents. And this is in US dollars in case we've got anyone watching from not in the US, this is in dollars. Um, so basically under a dollar is what they're saying that you can get this product for. What is important to pay attention to as well here is their MOQ or their minimum order quantity. So that's in the orange right here where it's saying that 100 pieces is the least amount that they're going to make of this product. Let me say this, everything is negotiable. Okay, so even if for some reason you didn't want 100 pieces of this item, you likely will still be able to negotiate with them for it. You might have to pay more, you might have to come to some kind of an agreement with them, but I wouldn't stress out too, too much about the MOQ because some of them are going to have a higher MOQ than others. This one is 100, but the one below it is 500 pieces. There are ways to negotiate. So don't stress out too, too much about that number there. And then what you can see is how many years they have been on Alibaba, how long they've been in business on this platform. This one says two years, the one under them says one year. And here's a tip for you guys. I do highly recommend that you find a supplier that has been in business for two years or more. The longer they've been in business, the more uh, surface level credibility they have, right? Because they could be in business for 10 years and be a terrible supplier. So that is not the only indicator of whether they are a good supplier or not, but it is something that lets a little bit more uh, credibility to them as a supplier. So two years or better is what I would look for. We can see on here is where the supplier is and this one says China. Fun fact, the majority of suppliers on here are going to be based out of China and that is because Alibaba.com is a Chinese marketplace. So there are going to be suppliers here and there that are from other places like India or Bangladesh or Vietnam or something like that, but the vast majority are going to be from China. So that is what you're gonna see more often than not. You can also see their reviews right here as well. You can see the reviews right here. So they have a 4.9 from 62 reviews. So it says that they have good customer service, on-time delivery, and the product quality is great. So with this, this looks very, very promising as a good supplier. You can chat with them now, you can contact the supplier, you can compare them to others. Now, based off of what I can see right here, this looks promising. So I would click onto their listing and that's going to open up another tab. So now I am inside of the product listing in and of itself. And right here we can see that they've got a video as the very first thing. Me personally, I would say that an image is better to have as a main image for a listing, but they have a video here and you can see that they are doing a drop test in this very first video. They're just talking about their features. So anti-fingerprint, oil coating, what else do they have here? More on the anti-fingerprinting, ultrasonic cleaning. This is really just like a sales video. They're just showing you the benefits. 
water drop angle test greater than 115 degrees. So they're going really far into the benefits of this product, which I mean, it is what it is. Not everyone's going to care about that, but it is, I guess, good to show the full features and benefits. So here we can see that they are talking about professional brand customization. So this would be really great for anyone who is looking to private label. They're essentially telling you that they can customize really anything and they've got different colors here that they can use. They've got a spot where they would put your logo. They're saying that they can truly make this into a private label easily and they can customize it to your liking as far as the packaging goes. So that I think is nice for them to have right there in the listing. Some other images here, again, this is the three pack and it seems like that's really all they've got here. A couple other pictures. So how do you actually look at this listing and figure out if it's what you're looking for? So what we can see again is what they're charging per piece. Now, one thing that I think is really important to ask them in your initial message to the supplier is when they say one piece, do they mean one package with three of them inside or do they mean every individual screen protector is one piece? And the only reason I'm giving you guys this tip is that when I was starting out selling on Amazon, I would make assumptions and I would think that one piece meant a package and then I would clarify with them and they would say no, one piece is one individual screen protector. And the reason that that matters is if you are trying to order a bulk amount, let's say 500 units of this item, that is a big difference if a package of three is 17 cents or if a package of three is 17 times three. So it would be each individual screen protector within the pack is 17 cents, then you have to multiply that by three to get the actual cost of that package. So that's gonna have a big impact on how much you pay in total. I know that this is a cheaper product, but let's say that you're looking at a product that is $5 per unit. That's a big difference if it's going to be five for the entire package or if it's going to be five times three items that are included, that would make it 15. So I know that it might not necessarily make as much of a difference because this is such a cheap product, but I want you guys to know that you always want to clarify in your initial message to your supplier. So that's one question that I would have. What is a piece to them? So they would need to let you know you can segment this by the phone model. So are you looking at an iPhone X or an iPhone XS Max? You can also specify the color. What I like when you look at a listing is when it has the lead time. So lead time is manufacturing time. How long is it going to take for them to make this item? And what we can see here is that it is dependent on how many you order. So if you order between one and 500 units, they can make it in as little as three days, which is really quick. If you get between 500 and one and 5,000, it'll take a week. If you get 5,000 to 10,000, it's gonna take 10 days and more than 10,000, you would need to chat with them and see what that timeline would look like. Again, my recommendation to you is that if you are looking at a supplier, their lead time should be no longer than 30 days. This is very fast and it's because it's a very simple product, but if you're talking to a supplier and they're saying that their lead time is 60 days, 45 days, uh, uh that's too long because when you need to reorder your inventory, it's going to take them forever to make it and you're going to be out of stock and you don't want that issue. The faster they can make it, the less heads up you need to give them to place your next order. And that is ideal. So with this, I think the lead time is very solid here. And then it talks about customization. So they're saying that you can customize your logo and customize the packaging. And there's even more graphic customization. So you can see everything that they have to offer here. And then if we go over to the right hand side, we can contact the supplier directly through messaging them. We can chat with them. I really do not like Alibaba's chat feature. I think it's very glitchy and clunky and I just personally don't like it, but you can do that if you want. But what I do recommend is to just contact the supplier through a message. And when you contact the supplier, you can write them a little blurb, a paragraph, asking them the most important questions. And the most important questions I would ask them what is your lead time? They have it right here, but not every supplier is going to tell you straight up what their lead time is. So you want to ask them that. You want to ask them how 
much it's going to cost for them to add the logo. Some will do it free of charge with the minimum order. Others are going to charge you per unit. Others are going to charge you a specific dollar amount. So some might say, oh, it's going to be 25 cents per unit to add your logo and to customize. Others might say it's going to be $300 to customize all of your units. And some might say it's included with your minimum order of 500 units or whatever. So you want to get clarity on that because obviously that will impact how much money you're going to have to pay to your supplier. You want to ask other questions like what packaging do they offer? You want to ask them if they, you know, know of any other products that are similar that you might bundle with your item. You can really ask them anything. And it's very important to take note of how they respond back to you. Because one thing about these suppliers is that they will really want to get your business, but they're not going to go not even the extra mile, but really do the bare minimum by answering all of the questions that you have. So if you are asking them four different questions in your initial message to them and they respond back with something very brief and they're not even addressing your questions, that is something that I wouldn't say is a complete red flag, but it's very, very indicative of how they are going to be with you moving forward. So if they are not you know, paying attention to what you're asking and what you're requiring of them, that's how it's going to continue to go. So how they are with you in those initial messages says everything about what it's going to be like moving forward with your business relationship with them. And of course, you want someone who's going to provide you the best customer service. That is what I would say when you contact the supplier, very straightforward. And then underneath that, you can see that they are talking about the specifics of the supplier. So they're telling you the name, you can click on it and it'll bring up their whole like supplier profile. I'm not gonna do that right now because it doesn't really matter. But you can see that they are a manufacturer and a trading company. The difference between a manufacturer and a trading company is that a trading company is sometimes the manufacturer, but more times than not, they are buying from the manufacturer and they're acting as a middleman. So they're not the ones actually making the product, but they are selling the product to you. So a lot of, I know at least for Amazon sellers, like to only work with manufacturers and not trading companies because you kind of want to go directly to the source. But I will say that trading companies are fine to work with, in my opinion, if you're not doing giant numbers, right? So if you're only ordering less than a thousand units, the price difference between going to the direct manufacturer and going to the trading company won't be significant. However, if you're ordering lots and lots of products, you probably will get the best price by going directly to the manufacturer. So that is the difference there. We can see some of the other info that we saw before, two years based out of China. Their response rate is less than three hours. So if you reach out to the supplier, more likely than not, you're gonna get a response back in a short amount of time, which is excellent. Anyone who has a response time over 24 hours is a no for me and should be a no for you too because waiting an entire day for a response back is just too much there's too many different suppliers to choose from to have to wait an entire day for a response and then on time delivery rate they've got a 98.9 which is excellent and they've done lots of transactions so that's a good sign too because if they have done this many times that means that you know, they're good at what they're doing, they're efficient. So that is a green flag for sure. When we scroll down, we can see more on the purchase details. So this is what I mentioned before you guys with trade assurance. So this is protected with Alibaba trade assurance, which is great. The shipping terms will be negotiated with your supplier once you're talking to them and everything is confirmed. For payments, they accept Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, I think this is Afterpay, Apple Pay, Google Pay, and it looks like they even offer more, which is excellent. Some of these suppliers are not going to want to do PayPal because there are extra fees involved with PayPal, but if they're not gonna offer trade assurance, they have to accept PayPal. It's one or the other, and please take my advice on this one, you guys. You will have some suppliers out there who are going to try to get you to pay for your order with a wire transfer, with something like Western Union. Never pay for your order with a wire transfer because once you send them that money, it is gone with the wind, boo. You will never see that money again. And, you know, sometimes they will still deliver your items, but if they don't, 
and they are scammers or untrustworthy bad suppliers then they can take your money and literally run and you'll never hear from them again so that is the reason why we always want to make sure that we are protected with trade assurance or paypal and we never pay with wire transfer it's just a no-go okay and then it says eligible for returns and refunds, which is great. I'm sure there are caveats, but you can click on more details to see what else would be eligible with the refunds. Also, it says it's a top rated supplier in the past 90 days, which is excellent. So with that, we can just get even more detailed into the products. So it's talking all about the details, the hardness, I mean, things that I would have no clue about. And this might matter to you as a seller, it might not, but at least all of the information is there for you to look at. Again, you can take a look into the company profile, the transactions, frequently asked questions. There's a lot that you can look at here. So I'm just giving you a quick overview of the important things. And then they've got even more information here about the different platforms that they have uh, partnered with. So eBay, Amazon, AliExpress, Wish, and some of these others, Shopify, I don't know these two, but that gives me confidence. I think that this supplier has done a very, very good job with their listing to make you feel as though, you know, they would be good to partner with. So the only other thing that would be important when you're talking to them is to just kind of see how they communicate. Are they responsive? You know, how are they talking to you? And then also just getting clarity on the pieces and the price per unit. And one thing that I forgot to mention is that when you're searching for these items and you see that the uh, price point that they're giving you is between 17 cents and 84 cents, you can't use that as the actual price because that is all going to be dependent on how many units you buy. The more you buy, the cheaper it's going to be per unit. So the same way how here they have segmented the lead time, they will also segment the cost per unit. So maybe between one and 500, it's going to be 84 cents. But then if you get 500 to 5,000, it might be 50 cents. If you get 5,000 to 10,000, it might be 25 cents. If you get more than 10,000, it might be 17 cents. So the more that you buy, the cheaper it's going to be, which is why they're giving you a range and not just telling you, oh, it's 50 cents because they can't make it 50 cents if you order 10 and then 50 cents if you order 10,000. That doesn't help them as a business. They want to sell more at once. So they're going to incentivize you to buy more at once by making it cheaper to buy more in one big lump. I hope that information and that little walkthrough of Alibaba was helpful to you. And one last gem, because I want to give you as much information as I can in this video, is just a quick rundown of what it might sound like when you reach out to these suppliers. And the reason I want to give you guys this info is because when you reach out to suppliers, sometimes they're going to be able to pick up on the fact that you are a beginner and that you've never done it before. And the problem with that is if you come off as a newbie, they might try to take advantage of that and not necessarily give you the best deal because they don't think you're going to know any better. So in order to make sure that you don't give them any indicator that you've never done it before, this is how your initial message to them should sound like. Hi, my name is Abby. I have an e-commerce business and I am interested in partnering with your company to have my products made. My team and I are really interested in your screen protectors and we were wondering if you could answer the following questions. What is your lead time? What is your cost per unit for 500 to 1,000 units? Do you offer customized packaging? They already said that they did, but just whatever questions you have, list them out and say, if you could kindly provide the answers to these questions, we would love to potentially move forward with placing an order with your company, right? So you're not just reaching out to them and saying how much for a thousand, because that's going to come off as you being unserious and it's going to set the tone for your business relationship with them. So you always want to come off as professionally as possible. And one final pro pro tip when you're talking to these suppliers is to always refer to another person who is part of the decision making process. So it's not just you who is deciding whether to work with them or not, but it's you and your 
your team. It's you and your business partner. It's you and your boss. So framing it in the sense that you're not in charge of the ultimate decision gives you a bit more leverage when you are negotiating with these suppliers. So to be able to say, you know, I know that your price point for 500 units is 75 cents per unit. However, my business partner just doesn't think we can make that work. Are you able to meet us at 70 cents per unit? It just gives you a little bit of something to work with. Whereas if it's just you, they're going to only think that you're the one who decides. So if you don't want to do it, then it is what it is. But at least if you have someone else that you have to go back to and someone else who just you really want to work with them, it's just that your boss thinks it's too expensive or you really want to work with them, but the team just doesn't agree. Sorry about the plane overhead, but hopefully you can still hear me. But that just gives you more leverage with negotiation. So highly recommend that you put that out there in your initial message that there are other people who are going to be part of the decision making process with you. So I hope you all found this video helpful and I hope that you feel confident when you are reaching out to these suppliers on Alibaba. And if you're still feeling a little bit nervous, just remember that you are in charge. You're the person that is placing an order with them. You're the one who is paying them. And so really their role in all of this should be to make sure that they provide the best possible service. So if you are coming across suppliers that are being pushy or that are, you know, trying to get you to place your order sooner than what you're ready for, remember that you set the pace. You can always say no and don't ever feel like you're obligated to work with a supplier just because you've had some conversations with them. You can always, always, always decide to walk away and you can always find someone new. There's so many different suppliers on Alibaba. There's not going to be a shortage. So don't ever feel pressured to do anything that you're not comfortable with. So I hope you like this video and I will see you guys in the next one.